Hi everybody, this is Josh. In this video, I'm going to try to answer some of the questions and reply to some of the comments that I've gotten on some of my videos about Gravit Designer. Let's jump right in. So Boris Fitzgerald asks if there is like a smart cutout option that will kind of sense what you want to cut out like in Photoshop. The quick answer is no, unfortunately, it does not have that. Raster or bitmap graphics are much different than vector graphics. The way that I cut out photos using Gravit is by creating a shape that works as a mask. So it's masking a bitmap image inside of a vector shape. And you have to do that by cre actually creating the shape. You can't select pixels like you can in Photoshop or other bitmap image editing applications. But I do want to show you a little bit more about cutting out images using Gravit Designer. So I'm going to come back and, and talk about that, Boris. Along those lines, I've got a couple of other questions about cutting out images. Um, one of them is um, from Marvin Gros Grosby. I'm just going to call you Marvin. Thanks, Marvin, for the question. He says, great tutorial. Do you know how to remove a portion of an image inside it, or I'm, I'm guessing inside the shape? or make a portion of an image transparent. So um, in the video that he's commenting on, it was a very simple cutout. There wasn't anything sort of like inside the shape. It was just a, a simple solid shape. And so I'm going to show you how to do a, a, a more complex cutout in this video. Let's see. And there was one more about text. And I'm going to try to combine a few of these questions. They were asking, how do you put text behind an object and again I'm, I'm assuming that they're talking about like a a cutout photo or a piece of something that is that is uh like a, a, a photographic element because it's very easy to put text behind a, a shape but you'd have to cut out a piece of a photo in order to put that in front of the text so i'm going to combine a couple of those things and do a video right now Thank you, by the way. Thank you for your comments and questions on these videos. It's very helpful for me. It's encouraging. It gives me a little bit more clarity on what I need to be making videos on. So thank you, guys. All right, so I'm going to start with a photo here. I'm getting this photo from Pexels.com. These are free, free for personal and commercial use, no attribution required photos. It's a great curated collection of really nice high-resolution fo uh, photographs that you can use for anything that you want. And you can see these images are very large, 4,000 pixels by 2666. So I'm just going to copy the preview image because it's large enough for me to make a Facebook cover photo. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I've just copied that to the clipboard. Now I'm in Gravit Designer. This is the uh, native app for Chrome OS. That's what I'm making this video on. And that's where um, that's that's what I'm using Gravit Designer on right now, Chrome OS. So I've just pasted that image in, and I'm actually going to go ahead and straight away duplicate it. Control D will duplicate that, and I'm just going to drag it off to the side. One of the nice things about Gravit Designer for me is that I can use this whole area here, this whole pasteboard area. I don't have to work specifically on the canvas like you you do in Photoshop. I can work off the canvas and then move things onto the canvas as I sort of finish what what I want to do. So, for example, this cutout, I'm going to use both of these images here. Actually, let me do this. So I'm going to scale this image up so that it is the same size as my canvas. Make sure you hold shift so you don't stretch it like this. You don't want to stretch it. Hold shift, and then you can snap it to the canvas boundaries. Now I'm going to duplicate that so it's the right size and just drag that duplicate over. There we go. I'm holding the space bar to pan around. Okay, and then holding control and the uh, scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in. Or you can use control and the plus minus keys. So what I'm going to do is cut out this this model right here. Okay, and uh, I'm going to simplify it a little bit for the sake of speed in this tutorial and I'm going to use the the point and click method that you've seen me use before so rather than clicking and dragging to create curves I'm just going to click between uh, where I want 
curves to go between these these uh, these nodes or line segments. And I'm going to actually turn off my snapping. And I have found that this is actually a little bit quicker of a way for me to to get a good cutout. And it just takes a little bit of practice. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm plotting a point um, wherever I want an anchor and not worrying about the curves in between. I'll tackle those later on. Another thing that I'm going to do is ignore anything that I'm going to cut out inside of this shape until later. And I'll show you how we tackle that. Okay, there's my very, very loose shape. Now I'm going to use my normal method here, turn off my border, and give my fill color something that will stand out a little bit better. Okay, and turn my opacity down so I can see both the shape and the image behind it. All right, now let's go ahead and get the direct selection tool, push D on the keyboard, and we can just start anywhere. I'll maybe start up here by his forehead. And I'm just pushing the line segments between those points that I created right into place. Again, this is a simplified cutout from what I'm, I can actually see in the photo, but it will work for our purposes in this video. Alright, that's pretty good for now. So what about these areas here inside the shape? Well, what I'm going to do is actually just create a new shape on top of the shape. And then we're going to uh, use the Boolean operations. So what I want to do is get this shape tidied up first. Okay, so I'm going to push all my curves into place just like I did before. Okay, now with that piece selected and my main shape here, we're going to go up here to the Boolean operations to create a compound shape, and I'm going to hit subtract. And there we go, we've cut that piece out. Now, what this does is it creates a, a non destructive compound shape. Um, but what I want to do is actually turn that into a raw path so that it is a little bit easier to handle. So with that whole thing selected, I'll do a Control Shift and P. You can see it turns it into a path because I want to do this again and get rid of this piece inside here. And I'm hitting V on the keyboard to go to the regular select tool then select both of them holding down shift. And you can see that represented here in the layers panel as well. Both of these are selected. Go back up here and use the subtract. There we go, we've got that piece. Um, I could actually go in here. I see a little bit of a sliver right in here. Let's go ahead and grab that as well. So just P to switch back to the pen tool on the keyboard. Create that small little shape and then push my curves into place. V on the keyboard, make sure I select both of them holding shift and subtract. And again, I can simplify this compound shape by holding control shift and pressing P. All right, so now I have this more complex shape. Let me just duplicate this shape so that you can see the shape by itself. Okay, here it is. I'm going to up my, my opacity and let's just make it black and go ahead and get rid of our border altogether. 
So you can see I've created that silhouette just like we did with Abraham Lincoln. Remember that? We, we cut out the penny. If you haven't seen that, please uh, check out the link you can see around somewhere here on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and, and bring my opacity for that shape all the way back up. Let's get rid of our border. And here's a really easy way of cutting out your shape or cutting out the photo using your shape. So you can see where I have it selected here in the Layers panel. This is the image that I want to clip to that shape. And I can just drag that image onto the compound path. You see it highlights there in pink. When I let go, it's going to merge those into a group. So I still have the entire photo there being clipped inside the shape. That's what I want. Now these will move together when I move them around. So uh, that's also what I want. And I'm going to move it back over right on top of my photo and get it lined up right about there. So I just use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge it over. And I'm going to select our, uh, our photo here that's behind it, okay? And double click to get my cropping, and I'm going to crop down this image. Turn my snapping back on, and I can snap it to the canvas order. And right there, that's exactly what I want. So if I move the cutout photo off, you can see we just have it overlapping, but it is cut out so that we can, we can change some things now about our background. And the first thing I'm going to do is just add a blur. And what this will do is kind of give us a depth of field effect without affecting our photo in front of it. Let's also go ahead and make these two pieces a little bit more distinct. So I'm going to click off onto the pasteboard here and change the background color here to this blue. And then select my image now that is the background. Let's just change the blending mode to multiply. So now we have a nice cutout here. These little inside parts. They respond really, really well to uh, changes I make to the background. Everything's nice and clean and crisp. Let's go ahead and add some text here that we can push behind our um, subject, the model here. And I'm just going to type in good vibes. And let's get a font that I like. And let's just make the uh, text a nice bright color here. We'll increase the font size. And we can also add, I'm going to add a fill and make it a linear gradient. And there we go. There's a nice Facebook cover for you. So uh, I hope that you're able to see that you can create more complex shapes to use as uh, shapes that clip your images, basically creating really nice, smooth, clean cutouts like you see here. And then just using layers, you can build up your composition by moving text behind your newly placed cutout and uh, basically reusing a single photo to create something much more complex like this. I hope that's valuable and helpful for, uh, for some of you. Thanks again for the comments and questions, and keep them coming. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.